And welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Spencer, and we're going to be talking about Big Sky Season 2, Episode Number 12. Um, if you've not hit the sub button, please do so. Leave a like, leave a comment. And it should have been the finale. I mean, to be honest with you, 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 full spoilers ahead, by the way. Um, this episode essentially wrapped up what I would argue is about 80% of the plot lines of this show. Some of which will go back all the way to the beginning of season one. And, and that's fine. You can do that. I mean, I don't like necessarily how some of them ended and we will definitely dig in, (laughs) in depth on our thoughts on that. But my big concern here is you wrapped up all these storylines. You've eliminated so many characters in one episode. There's still two episodes left this season. As far as I know, uh, the only thing left is the, the Ren Jag story, which I'm enjoying, you know, but I don't know the way the story, the way this show is structured. I don't see how one particular story can carry the weight of the show. It just, it, they haven't done that thus far. So that's my biggest takeaway from this episode. And like I said, we'll go into the details, but just your overall thoughts on how much happened in this episode and is that a good thing bad thing i mean i I don't know man uh i don't either um i think that to me it it only pissed me off because the way that they wrap stuff up and we'll talk about it later this week uh you know we watch snowfall and talk about brilliant writing masterpiece Um, (laughs) but even i mean there's some b-level cw shows that have better writing than this and it's it makes me feel like they they didn't have this to me is foreboding as far as there's not going to be a season three i think that they basically were like all right guys we're wrapping this shit up and this was their way of doing it um i that's the feeling i get uh is that they're just done and i don't mean that like negatively they're like fuck this place like they're just like hey you have two episodes left wrap this shit up it almost felt that way. I, I, I agree. I mean, well, let's start breaking them down. So we'll, I don't know. What, we'll start with the, the easy one and then we'll get to the, I'll, I'll save my boy Ronald for last. <laughs> um, so a big storyline that was in season two, the big storyline was Max. You know, Max had found this money, you know, she, she's with her friends and her girlfriend and they find this money and drugs and it's a whole situation and then, you know, this creepy guy that's with her mom named t is involved. We find out he has ties Isn't to... Gracie? <laughs> yeah, he's criminal ties, and he's doing all this stuff. He ends up s- stealing the money. He does all this bad stuff. And anyway, it all leads to Max, her mother, being kidnapped. t coming back, dying in the process, sort of sacrificing himself in a way. But not really. I don't know... I. That was one of the biggest head scratching moments of the whole show so far for me was the T Lock story arc. Cause I'm like, what was I supposed to get from that? That, oh no, he was a good guy. I'm like, but he's never done anything yeah. to be good. I, I don't, it was bizarre to me that, that now they're like, no, no, he, he was a good guy. Uh, okay, sure. Um, I don't know. I know you had a lot of thoughts on the oh, T Lock story. God damn it. Like, well, a lot of what you just said, you know, you establish this guy, he's creepy. He's like trying to like with Max, he was real creepy and overtly not necessarily sexual, but almost sexual. Like it was very like dirty kind of feeling. You got this creepy older guy who's really, you know, flirting with this high school girl, kind of manipulating her, uh, he manipulates the mom into basically just taking him back while he spends all her money. Then he spends a portion of this money he stole to buy a car. And, you know, he's taking advantage of his sister. His sister's at the point where she's like, get the fuck out of my, like he's a giant piece of shit. And then what, in two seconds, you're going to have him redeem himself. And And remember he grabbed Max came into her room, you know, and put his hand over her mouth. I mean, it was a whole, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, It's like everything he's done has not only been shitty, it's been overtly creepy and everything else. And now what? He's suddenly going to sacrifice himself for somebody who he didn't really even 
like care for. It would. Now, if he was like, they should have played up to where he was scared. And then, you know, in his last ditch effort, he tried to run away and did something like it. Him suddenly being heroic is bullshit. Because he was willing to run off with them. Like, we also got a, the show, and that, just this isn't my opinion. This is the show told me that he was willing to take the money and run. And yep. then it wasn't until. You know, he got this call and then he was a little concerned, but then the cops got involved and arrested him. Um, so we weren't, it wasn't clear, at least to me, what he, what he was going to do next. And so I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like you said, it, it was the fact that they killed him off that I thought was sort of funny. Cause I'm like, okay, you know, and they're trying to make it this heroic thing. And I was like, oh, sure. Why not? And then where does that leave us? As far as I'm concerned, that storyline is done. Everything is Brid- Bridger and his whole family. They left. Max is now yep. fine. She's got her mom. The money and drugs are out of the picture. T Lock's gone. Uh, you know, you could have her go call Harp and hang out or whatever. But as far as I'm concerned, that whole story is over. Well, to me, it's similar to what they did with the uh, the two girls in the last season, where they just. Yeah. Picked- once they were done, they're just like, all right, well, these two people no longer exist. I'm like, so they die? No, we just don't give a shit about them anymore. Their story's finished. They're done pushing the plot forward, so we're done with them. That's 100% what it feels like. And that's okay. But, you know, it, to make them an essential part of the story, like they have throughout this entire fucking season, to suddenly just not give a shit is very... And like we've said it before, the piss poor writing part, it's, you can't make, you know, all these characters important and make all these things like super a big deal and then just not give a shit. And that's what it feels like is that it goes from not just being important, but being, you know, pushing the plot forward and to suddenly just not mattering. And T Lock himself, yes, he's a piece of shit, but he was a decent, like, sub villain. And then you have him be a hero at the end. You have Max and her friends, they're pushing the plot forward, they're stealing the money. You have all these accidents, but now you have the Woods guy who is, might be Harper's dad. I don't know. And, you know, he comes by and saves everybody, and then Harper disappears, and that dude disappears. Like, it's just, you have all these sub characters to basically push the plot forward, but. If you're going to have them in there, at least wrap their stories up or at least do it believably. And they just piss poorly just threw these people's stories out there. And it's that's my gripe is that having sub characters is okay. Having people to basically just push the plot forward is also okay. But to place importance on them and then just shittily write them out, that's my beef. Well, that's one of my beefs. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, yeah, like I said, I'll save Ronald for last. So we'll we'll talk about the. Uh, there's only really like three things to talk about. The other big thing is is sort of the the Jag Ren stuff because clearly that's going to be the, like the whole that. the whole show. Look, they're great. I love the 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 meeting with Tanya and and um, Dono and all that. You know, they're like talking about the truckers and he's like, well, I have, I have, I have information on their loved ones. I know, you know, I mean, it would, I enjoy the dynamic of all those characters together, but we, we have Alicia. Alicia is with their father and she, there's a mystery and we don't know what that mystery is. They want to pull up, uh, stakes out of Canada and leave. And so Rin and Jag are trying to figure things out. They're like, who, who this Alicia came in and, you know, their dad's life what's she all about there's a moment where he speaks with Rin, and when he walks off alicia comes up to him and is like oh did you tell her and he's like no not yet what is what is the mystery does this tie into the syndicate is there is is he is it a health issue you know um with him is it something simple like that or is it something more complex i don't know but it is interesting that that's going to clearly be the whole show for the next couple episodes the other sidebar to that is stone slash travis uh, stole the money. So Bob or whatever his name was, he escaped. He left the money. Travis took it. When asked about it, he said, "No, it's gone." So I'm assuming he's going to take it to Ren and be like, "Look, I got the money. 
I'm guessing. Um, that's that's our story. What is that mystery? How, what is the importance of it? Um, any theories on Alicia? Well, uh, a little bit. I think that to me, the only thing that makes sense is that he fucked up when it came to the syndicate. Like he's on the run now. So now he's trying to get away from them because to me, there would be no reason where he would want to expand and leave a lucrative business. He's already an evil guy to be able to traffic that amount of drugs, traffic humans, traffic guns. Like it's, you have to have like a desensitization to people and <laughs> you can't, you can't be that kind of piece of shit and just be suddenly grow a heart. So he's not doing it because he feels like what they're doing is bad. He's doing it because he's either scared uh, because expanding one's business, why would you stop being in Canada and only be in the U S why would you uproot yourself from a lucrative business that you've grown there? So to me, the only reason to do that is that he's scared and he's hoping that being in the U S will keep him safe. But when you look at what's happened with other people, whether it's Ronald Rick, uh, several of the other cops that were on their payroll, there's been so many people that they've basically killed off. However, they've also shown that characters storylines that they've established don't mean shit. So I don't know. I, I, fuck it this could just be nothing could just be a way to have them take over and be the main villain in the show as opposed to ronald and his bullshit storyline that they wrapped it like i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, i'm not sure either um i'm assuming so yeah getting to ronald all right the first complaint is the doctor finding the chip come on <laughs> The way that scene was even done, I was like, oh God, there's no way he would have found it. I'm sorry. I, I, it was just, it was stupid. But I was like, okay, whatever. He found the chip. Didn't matter in the in the end. But basically, I wrote down this series of events. We have the doctor stabs Scarlet. Maybe she's dead. I don't know. It, it, it was just one of those, okay, he stabs her. At first, I thought he was going to inject her with some syringe. But then I realized yeah. that's not a... Yeah, that's not a syringe. <laughs> and he stabs her. Ronald then kills the doctor. Okay, fine. Mark and Wolfgang get there. They shoot each other. Mark has a wound that looks fine. Wolfgang may or may not be dead. And then Cassie kills Ronald with a hook through his throat. Now, here's my problem. It's as far as how all that played out, it, that was fine. It didn't really bother me, bother me. My my concern is you've drug us along for how many episodes now <laughs> with these characters to just, and it's over. You know, you, you know what I mean? Like there needed to be a little bit more with Ronald, I think, uh, before you wrapped it up. That's all I'm saying. As far as Scarlet, I, I was starting to like Scarlet's character uh, in terms of her being a you know villain on the show. It looks like they wrote her out as well. You wrote out a lot of characters. And and there are points in this show, especially in season one, but even in season two, where the Ronald storyline would be anywhere from 30 to 60% of the show. You know what I'm saying? So now they're gone? So what? Do, that, that's why I was said at the top when I was talking about how you, you just wiped out. The, the, the way this show is structured, it doesn't... It doesn't. I don't see how it functions going forward without, unless something replaces it. Um, but yeah, I, I think they could have done a little bit more with Ronald. I'm not angry that he died. I mean, I don't think he did. And, and see, <laughs> he, he might, he might not have. But I, it seemed pretty clear. But no, I mean, yeah, you're. This is Big Sky. We're talking Rick about. Rick got fucking head. Uh, yeah, I know. Rick was fine. <laughs> So that's my thing is that I don't think that the only one that I thought might die was going to be Mark, which was going to piss me off because he's one of the better actors in the show. So if they basically, you know, wrote him off, I was going to be a little pissed. But I think that I don't think any of them are dead. And more so because if they are, I mean, I already have enough issues with the show. I don't need help. but. 
I think that Ronald Ronald dying has so many other issues. Uh, and, I mean, we've talked about it a bunch too. It's all the ties to the past season. This felt like if they're not wrapping it up, the, if they are not wrapping it up and doing a season three, they literally just were like, "Yeah, we don't like the direction. We're just gonna." Season one and the first half of two are done. We're just going to switch gears completely. Um, and for these to be based off of books, uh, you can tell the first ten episodes were basically supposed to be a miniseries. Well, the first nine episodes and then the finale that they fucked up. But they, it felt decent. The first nine episodes of this show, it was outlandish and crazy, but you felt like there was a direction. And now, there is none. And that's... And we've talked about it too. When you talk about like script writing and trying to establish a story, you need to establish characters, the, what their motive is, what they're supposed to be doing, what their reason for existing is. And for that to change, that's okay, but you have to show character growth. Um, when you look at the first several seasons of Game of Thrones before they fucked it up in the last season, you know, you're establishing character growth, you're establishing characters, you're establishing why these characters changed, uh, you know, what they've done to, to change. Whereas this, none of these characters establish shit. They just change from episode to episode, and that's piss poor writing. And it's frustrating because when you see the characters like Ren and Jag and Dono, uh, even Ronald and the Ligarskis, where they embrace the silliness and the craziness of it, it can be a fun show. But when you don't establish a character like Jenny, who changes every episode, uh, we'll, we'll shit on stone here in a minute. So I won't go too much into that, but like his character, Cassie, who depending on who she's with, she's a completely different character depending on who she's paired with. And that's frustrating to not be able to establish a character and just stick to it. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, they could be alive. I, I, I thought about that. Well, my, it seemed like they set up in the last episode this idea, you know, the the moment where Ronald's, you know, sort of dying and uh, Rick visits him, you know, and just the way that was handled, I was like, okay, whenever you, if you're going to take Ronald out, there's got to be a moment where he's coming to terms with his past, whether he ha he remembers the victims, you know, the people he killed, or or even if Rick is there, just to be like, yeah, you're going to hell, just something. Yes, he had the line, I was a good boy, and it's like, okay, fine, but I don't know. It, it To me, it's just sort of a, a lame ending for Ronald oh, if he is dead. Super fucking lame. Like, now, instead of him being this twisted sociopath, now it's he's basically dude from Psycho. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Um, but yeah... I, and then, so the the other, you know, brought it up earlier as far as the syndicate. Um, we have it with so Ronald and Ligarski. We know Ligarski was tied in with them. We know Ronald was definitely tied in with them. Are they going to show up in any way? You know, that was another thing I was thinking about. I was like, well, I kept waiting for them to pop in and save Ronald or, or something. I don't know what they would do with Ronald. He's too high profile of a, of a person in other words it wouldn't make sense for them to want to use him necessarily but I, I thought that's where they were going with it and if they if him or uh wolfgang are alive i think that's what they'll do they will come in um yeah and i don't think they'll save them they'll use them as scapegoats kind of to brush everything under the rug and make these two out to be the bad guy instead of it being like a giant you know corporation thing not corporation, a syndicate type kind of thing. They'll just write it off as these two guys are crazy and they've been working together to accomplish X, Y, Z. Um, you brought up stone. I don't have anything to say about stone. He took, it, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't know what the character is anymore. So I don't, I'm, <laughs> I've given up trying. <laughs> he, it's like, why didn't he tell Jenny? Yeah, I got the money. I need it to, do this job you know what I mean? like he he wants to kill ren and jag's father he had a chance but he didn't do it i don't i don't know what the character's point is i don't know what his 
he said what his goal is, but at this point, I don't, I don't know. He seems willing. There were a few times in this episode where it, it didn't seem to bother him that Max was kidnapped. Um, what you mean? He's a crooked piece of shit. And so it, established that he is. But yeah, they keep flip flopping on him. Yeah. They keep going back and forth, back and forth. So I don't know. His character is undefinable at this point. It just it changes episode to episode. Which goes back to what I've said my gripe was like five or six times. Like you can't establish a character and then legitimately go completely 180 on that character 18 more times and then expect us to be able to not just establish storylines, but establish credibility to those characters. So you have Stone, who we we talked about last episode. It was funny as shit. He's been to Jenny's house like 47 times. Uh, and then finally she comes to where he is and he's like, you're going to blow my cover. And, you know, it's ridiculous to even think that at this point she could blow his cover that he hasn't already done. But, uh, and like you said, all of last episode, he's like trying to be this undercover cop. He's trying to do the right thing. He's establishing that maybe he's trying to do the good thing. And then this episode, he steals the money. He doesn't give a shit that they're kidnapped. It's, like you said, at this point, and it's not that he's just playing a good, sneaky, undercover guy. He's a piece of shit, but then he's not a piece of shit. And then he really loves Cassie, but then he's using her. Or not Cassie, Jenny. So it's, talk about, you know, flip-flopping and motivation for a character. If he was completely pretending to be a good cop, and then this was the first episode where we revealed that he wasn't, I'd be like, oh shit, okay, he's crooked. Like a Jackie but, Roar. <laughs> yeah, but he's been crooked, then not crooked, then was wary of being caught and then doesn't give a shit, and he's like a loose cannon. So you can't you can't establish a character and then unestablish it and then reestablish it and expect me to believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just don't know where he stands. I mean, I, I literally, from episode to episode, I don't know. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely the writing with him. Um, I, my only other little minor thing is for whatever reason, and I, and I'm curious if there, if there was a, um, more to it, but th they really wrote Cassie out a lot this season, <laughs> at least this half, especially yeah, she's just not been in the show that much. And, the, you know, they, they wrote, you know, okay, they killed off her dad or whatever. And you, she, I guess, got her revenge with Ronald. So she's had a few little parts, but it's been odd to me uh, how little she's been in the show. Um, my guess is that'll turn around the next two episodes. Maybe, the, uh, I don't know. It almost felt like there was a reason. Like, I, I don't know if there was, if the actress was busy doing something else or something was going on. But that, that was the vibe I, I've been getting, even with this episode. So that just, well, I just don't know. It felt that way. I don't disagree. Um, it's one of those things where you establish characters. You hear the dogs barking? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if I was far enough away from where you couldn't really hear them or if it was still uh, super able to hear them. But they, uh, when you establish her character, she's been a uh, similar thing as Stone, just better, like, I guess, base for a character. <laughs> but when you establish a character and then throw her 97 curveballs, um, I think that they felt like Jenny's character, they knew what they were going to do with. I think with Cassie, they just don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what direction to kind of point her in. So I think that although she's the main character in the books, they've already established that they don't really give a shit about the books. They just kind of went and did whatever. I think that they may go forward without her. Uh, if they get a season three, I think there's going to be the her and Mark show uh, versus, you know, Jag and Ren. I don't, I think what they tried to do initially was establish this kind of PI thing but I don't think that they like that direction um, because even their PI office, the Denise, I think that was her name. Was that her name? 
the way yeah, I never, I never remember. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. She was a integral part in the first season and then they kind of went away with her. You had Jerry who was an integral part of the first season, the beginning of this season. And then she went to go do something else. So I think that they're going to go more procedural, crazy cop drama as opposed to the PI route. And I think that they're trying to kind of put feelers out there to see how well it does. Uh, to see if they go forward with it or not. But I think that that's what they're doing is that they're trying to do the more crazy cop route and they're going to focus with Jenny, the new little sidekick guy that's there. Um, and then uh, I don't think that Cassie's going to be, she's either getting written out of the show or they're just trying to test to see if they're going to head that route or not. That's what I think anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I would assume that we'll know pretty soon uh, if there will be a season three. Like I said, it's listed that there's two more episodes. And then, what's it, a month? Yeah, we're about that time where they'll start making decisions and canceling a bunch of stuff. So we'll probably, we'll know soon. Um, We just, uh, for those who listen to us on a pretty regular basis and know how excited I am about it, we, I just found out it's been like three or four days, but the Barry's coming back. Oh yeah. Uh, so, you know, you look at shows that have been announced, not been announced, been announced. Uh, I, this, you know, Brian's going to edit this and put this up shortly, but Wednesday, the Wednesday show just got announced and that's announced like four hours ago that like just came out. So there's a lot of things that are getting ready to start up and go, you know, come on board and with this show kind of petering out and not doing great i think that this one might be one that gets the axe i could see it the the the, um ratings are down as far as viewership so i mean i don't know um i'll say this and this is way off topic but you mentioning other shows raised by wolves very big fan of that show brilliant um (laughs) but i'm telling you right now if they don't announce a third season, <laughs> oh god, I'm so cool. pissed off! I don't know what's going on. As of, uh, I just checked, and they still hadn't. I don't know what's happening. But the, the the show was season two ended with the intent of a third season. I mean, it's written that way. Um, there is no closure. Um, oh no, not even a little bit. Not, like, not you no. You couldn't even end that with webisodes. Let no. Alone. <laughs> So maybe Big Sky will, you know, like I said, they seem to wrap a bunch of stuff up. I'm assuming in the next two they'll wrap up more and it'll end in a way where it's like, well, if we make more, cool. If not, you know, it's over. Um, but yeah. is the, uh, and I, Here's the thing for anyone who's still listening, because I, I am curious. I don't watch a lot of network TV. You know, when I say network TV, I'm ABC, NBC, Fox, uh, CBS. I just don't. Is there any shows that haven't been on for like 40 seasons <laughs> that are on network TV that you guys watch and enjoy and would be something that could easily be jump into and us to cover? I'm just curious because Big Sky is one of those things that um, I would have typically never watched. Uh, it's definitely had its ups and downs, but uh, yeah, I just it's been many years since I was big on watching network shows. So yeah, just curious. I, I really don't know what's out there, to be completely honest. Well, I think that this was, although this was so shittily written, it's not a great example, but I look at shows like The Good Place, which was a four-season run. They did 13 episodes apiece. It was great. That was a great show. Um, I think with streaming stepping up their stepping up their game, network TV has gone less on the 26 to 47 episode seasons and going more along the lines of the shorter like uh eight to 13 episodes which i think is a great idea because one the budgets are better uh you don't have to try and stretch out you know 26 episodes because look at like friends or the office where you basically are paying these key actors a hundred thousand an episode look at what they did with big bang theory that was 26 episode seasons and they were paying Mm -hmm. one of those fuckers like a couple hundred thousand an episode. So it, it gets to the point where the budgets be so high as it becomes more successful. I think the eight to 13 episode seasons is more viable 
um, which, you know, this was like that. It was a shorter season. They were trying to do that route. And I am curious if network TV is going to go more that route as opposed to the much longer filler episode seasons. Yeah. I, and they, and they're con- constantly putting new shows out. Um, you know, every so often I'll see a promo or see something like, Oh, that looks sort of interesting. And I just, you know, never look into it. Um, cause like you said, at this point I'm, I'm more picky. So it's usually like HBO, you know, pretty much HBO showtime. Um, occasionally yeah. Netflix. If I didn't have to pay for it, then I'm not watching it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's big sky. Like I said, we got two more episodes. We will do those reviews. Uh, Hopefully it's good. We got the uh, snowfall review coming up later this week. Um, Raised by wolves, as I said, as uh, Spencer said, Barry is coming back. We'll be covering that in April. Um, I need to see see what else is out there. there. There's been a lot of new shows. I just hadn't been interested in any of them. Um, there was that show on HBO, the the Magic Johnson one, and I just I just I was like, eh. <laughs> I was sort of interested, and I thought about, you know, maybe we could look at it, but I don't know. Yeah, so it, it, I'll keep my eyes open. It just looked interesting. I just didn't know if I cared enough to watch well, it week to week. It Well, that's one of those ones where it's going to drop, like, three episodes week one, two episodes week two. Three oh, yeah, Flight Attendant's coming up, right? Yes, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's one. I think they're going to do weekly on that, though. Yeah, probably, but I think the first week is two. Yeah, they'll drop more than one. Yeah, yeah. But, all right. Anything else? No. <laughs> well, we appreciate everyone listening, and we will uh, see y'all next time. Bye.